so business impact analysis, as I also defined in the risk management area, which is also used here, is a foundation of business continuity management. It identifies critical parts of the business process. Then it identifies threats. Then it helps you analyze the impact of disruption. Again, you know, quantifying and basically qualifying losses and then prioritization of business process again. We are not doing for all because it comes with the price tag. We have to really, you know, look into the ones that are really needed and then provision of data for selecting strategies. So by what, what do I mean when I say we need to identify critical parts of the business process? So critical means basically time a process can be unavailable without major consequences. Service level quality implications of process delay. So always we have some SLAs with our you know, customers. If I'm not, if I have some disruptions, what it means in terms of SLAs and how basically this impact finally my reputation, my finance, or these sort of things. And then legal compliance implication of process delay. So banks are, for example, regulated by very stringent legal frameworks. Banks need to be available 24 hours. Their services, if they become unavailable for a certain time, they might have their licenses canceled to operate in certain countries. Yeah. Okay, and then we, what we document here in business impact analysis is we document the impact over time for each activity, resource, or a product. In terms of financial, means you know how much money I will lose. In terms of legal, what are the legal you know implications, consequences coming out if I'm, I, my process becomes unavailable? And what is the external? How happy will be my customer, for example, if I stop selling you know Colgate sensitive toothpaste, right? So that's what we look into. And then, of course, we have to identify the dependencies among all the activities, the resources, which I will also explain later a bit. This shows a typical business impact table. For example, uh, <coughs> we have sales order management process, right? So, OK, let's take this example, where we have the first, top, first step, which is document submitted for a loan, right? And this is basically some bank where a customer goes and submit a document to get the loan. What happens if this activity is not working for zero hour? Maybe you know zero hour means basically it's running, right? So there is no four hours. So for four hours, the bank is sort of not operating for this particular activity, right? So they're losing customers. So they can compute some financial loss. They can also compute some you know, legal one if they're a bank. And they can also compute some external, for example, you know, the customer also becoming unhappy going to some other banks to get the loans. So for eight hours, what it means, for two days. And there is some particular time where, you know, if you are not back up and running, you are simply out of the business. And then this basically also helps to basically compute, you know, severities of, you know, each of these downtimes. And then we have already a prioritized list of, you know, risks that we need to address. Okay, now these are the terms which are very, you know, interesting from business continuity management perspective. Maximum tolerable period of disruption. So this means that, you know, if I am not selling Colgate sensitive for two days, the customer might come back to Tesco or, you know, some other store and see it for the third day, for the fourth day. But after five days, pretty sure he will go to some other brand. So I lose a customer, right? So maximum period of disruption is that the time when you will just lose your customer, when you will be simply out of the business. So yeah, so we are looking into, we are computing in business continuity management maximum tolerable period of disruption for each individual service product or activity. From the, you know, from the banks, we can easily compute this. Also, we can get the expert knowledge, and we, the bank guys, they can tell us, you know, when this activity is not available for four days, they might be also out of the business because they are, you know, not getting enough customers here. Okay, and this maximum tolerable period of disruption, it's very highly variable. For example, you know, when we do quarter end closing, there are certain services we are running only during that time. So if these services are not available for you know January, February, no problem. But if they are not available, you know, end of March, where, when I am running these quarterly you know uh, reports, then they are critical ones that time. So I have to really look into you know empty PD for each of these activities, resource, and product. Another interesting concept is RPO, recovery point objective which means now I'm SAP company. SAP does, for example, data backups after every 12 hours. 
So SAP knows that you know if after 11 hours everything breaks down, still they have so they lose the data from the last 11 hours. SAP knows it will still there will be loss, but still SAP will be will be able to operate again. And for some companies, you know, they are doing backups after every four hours because they know that our, if they lose the data more than four hours, they can they will not be able to survive, right? So the whole idea of this recovery point objective is for each different business domain, for each different company, product, service, we need to compute time for which they need to do data backups. And if they don't do that, they will be out of business again because they don't have that critical data that is needed for them. Again, you know, return time objective that I explained a bit earlier. So it's maximum acceptable time that you can afford that your activity, product, or service is unavailable. After that, you're just out of the business, yeah? Okay, or you can also explain in that way, maximum time customer is willing to wait. After that, he will go to your competitor. There is some, you know, step in your business process. Let's say create order. Yeah? So here basically you go to, you call Pizza Hut, right? You order Pizza, right? And and Pizza Hut, you know, they are, so this 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 process step, this, or we call it process activity, this has a return time objective, which means that, you know, this, uh, let's say it is three hours. After that time, you know, then this, uh, this will be out of the business, yeah? So RTO basically, in this case, becomes equal to maximum tolerable period of disruption because you are out of the business anyway, right? Now we have, for example, this thing. Uh, let's say this is MTPD, yeah? And this is RTO, yeah? So RTO can, you know, be equivalent to MTPD, maximum period of disruption time, three hours, but this means I'm not really sure then. You know, if I'm not working for three hours, which is equivalent to my maximum period of disruption, I might be out of business still. So my preference would be to keep RTU a bit on this direction, lesser than MTPD. So if your return time objective is, is shorter than the maximum tolerable period of disruption, you know you're never going to reach that maximum. Exactly, yeah. So my, um, because RTO, RTO to be on the safe side, I would really count, you know, if MTPD is my three hours, I will keep RTO two hours or one hour, less than that. But as I keep RTO less, it means I have to spend more money in organizing more resources. I have to organize, maybe, you know, this, this, this needs one service, S1, right? S1 is unavailable. I do S2, another service provider, which is providing me, you know, something. Or again, S3. So as I have more redundant resources, my RTO becomes less, but the price tag is going higher. Yeah? So we have to really find, you know, in a very clever way that RTO will... So are you saying you can't, you can't influence the MTPT, but you can influence the RTO? Exactly. So if organization that my customer is very rich, yeah, they will say, you know, keep RTO maybe, you know, zero, or, you know, 30 minutes maximum. If they are, you know, not with enough money, they might say that, okay, MTPD is three hours, let's put RTO two hours and 50 minutes. Here you see, the shorter the RTO, the greater the cost, simply, yeah, from this, what I explained to you. The closer the RTO to the MTPD, the greater the chance that recovery will not be achieved, right? Because customer might be gone already.